Last week, we checked out number 6 through 10 of the best and worst films of 2011. This week, we're checking out the top five. And just like last week, we're starting with the worst. At number five, I am number four. This attempt to start a new teen-targeted franchise is lacking in everything it needs to be successful, aside from a good-looking cast of actors and actresses. I'm sorry, what did you say? In at number four, the title of this movie alone gives a hint that it will suck. I don't see it that way. Cowboys and Aliens, starring Harrison Ford. This film was overhyped, poorly acted, and poorly written. I think the kids from Super 8 could have produced a more entertaining movie. The Big Year lands at number three. This film just proves that even a strong cast of great actors cannot always save a script that's mediocre at best. That's the worst. I expected much, much more from a film with Steve Martin, Angelica Houston, and Brian Dennehy. Number two brings us Bucky Larson, Born to be a Star. This complete waste of celluloid delivers an hour and a half worth of alleged humor wrapped in euphemisms and double entendres. If you saw this in theaters, I'd recommend asking for a refund. What? And my pick for the worst movie of the year? Jack and Jill, starring Adam Sandler. This is Sandler's jump the shark moment. He seriously needs to rethink the direction he's going in or stick to financial backing of other people's movies only. Oh my god, I am so sorry! So there you are. My picks are the worst films of the year. Now let's erase those from your memory and look at some better ones. 50-50 is one of the most moving films of the year and comes in at number five. Don't do this. What are you talking Please about? Please don't do this. Gordon Levitt and Rogan balance each other out very well in the best odd couple sort of way. A true story that displays the strengths of friendship in the face of adversity. Childhood favorites return after a 12-year hiatus from theaters. At number four is The Muppets. I don't know what to say! Brought back with the help of Jason Siegel, this is a film for the entire family. All the laughs and all the music you could ever expect from Jim Henson's legacy. In at number three, My Week with Marilyn. Marilyn, darling. The second true story to make the list, Kenneth Branagh and Michelle Williams deliver stellar performances of icons Laurence Olivier and Marilyn Monroe. Definitely a must-see as this will be a defining role for Williams. The Help is at number two. An outstanding cast performance highlights an era in our history that was rife with inequality. Fans of the book will love this film, and everyone else will love the story of bucking the tide of the majority in favor of the winds of change. All right, I'm gonna do it. It's a period piece so finely put together that some may think it's a true story. And finally, my choice for best film of the year is the third true story in the top five, J. Edgar, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. You were with the old Bureau seven years, and that Bureau is now gone, sir. Under the direction of legend Clint Eastwood, DiCaprio delivers what could end up being the best performance of his career, an excellently produced film that is sure to garner some Oscar nominations. So there you have it, the top 10 best and worst films of 2011. What did you think of the list? Go to our Facebook fan page, Fox 24 Movie Night, and let us know what you think. Have a great new year. For Fox Movie Night, I'm Mike Emery.